And then 40 years later, the Joshua generation that was mentored for 40 years by the example of Joshua and Caleb, that Joshua generation enters the promised land and Joshua and Caleb lead it. You see, because they didn't get bitter. So even if you get taken out of ministry because of another person or whatever, something happens, maintain a right spirit. God looks at Caleb and says, he's got a different spirit in him. That's what God says here in Scripture. When God looks at you, can he see a different mm. spirit? Mm. Whereas it's, they're just the same as everybody else, complaining, murmuring, negative, 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 you know, complaining, complaining. Or does he say, faith, I can see faith. I can see hope. I can see, you can see the joy set before you. When God sees you, does he see someone with a different spirit? And if not, are you willing today to say, God, give me a different spirit? Because it starts, your future starts today. Isn't that good news? I don't care about your past. Don't let your past keep your future captive. Your future starts today. Are you willing to ask God, cry out to God, God, give me a different spirit. Give me a spirit like Joshua and Caleb. Amen. Give me a spirit that refuses to get bitter and resentful. Give me a spirit that I can see with the vision clearly. Lord, give me the vision as you see the vision and, and help me to stop focusing on the problem. So, one final picture I want to give you of this whole picture of, of, of the tunnel of transition and convergence is that of a caterpillar. A caterpillar, you see those caterpillars, like they're really ugly. And all ugly colours and everything, and you don't, you know, you don't see someone go, oh, what a cute caterpillar, you know. The caterpillars are really ugly looking and everything. And then the caterpillar, he has to weave a chrysalis, and he weaves himself into the chrysalis. And he stays in this chrysalis for a season of time, and there's major transition happening. Because the caterpillar eventually breaks out of the chrysalis as a butterfly. You know, some of those butterflies are really beautiful and awesome. The person that God is making you into is going to be beautiful and awesome and it's going to be different. We're going to change. We're going to become more like Jesus. And so there's this transition from the old person to the new person that we need to go through a chrysalis time of transition. Do you know what happens to a caterpillar when they're inside the chrysalis? When I was a child... I, I found a chrysalis. It was had a, had a caterpillar in there, you know. I was really excited. And I decided I would set the little caterpillar butterfly free, you know. And so I actually broke open this chrysalis when the caterpillar was in the middle of its change but not finished its change. Mm. Do you know what came out? This sludgy looking monster thing. Okay. It was like all sludgy and it's half caterpillar, half butterfly and it's just sludge everywhere. And it just died. Almost instantly died. See, when you're going through That's your right. wilderness of transition, That's right. okay, this is like your chrysalis. They kind of look like this. You know, da -da 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 -da. I want you to think about it. God calls you into a place for a season and He says, Do not leave. Do not Jonah. <laughs> Do not run away. Stay here until I finish what I start. Because the thing is, if you run away, you'll, you will literally, your emotionally, your life will be like that sludge. You, you, you will not pass the test. The, the enemy wants you to run away from your test. Because he doesn't want you to become a spiritual butterfly. He doesn't want you to become who God's called you to be. So this is the other thing. If you're going through a testing right now, and in your mind it's just like, I want to run away. For Israel, they're constantly, not one time, many times, I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go back to Egypt. What am I doing here? I don't want to be here. I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go back to Egypt. My friends on the mission field, I want to go back to America. I want to go back to America. I hate this place. But some of them, they stayed. They struggled, they stayed, they struggled, and eventually, you know what? They came to love China. They came to love the Chinese people. Some of them left. I don't know what they're doing, running around mountains somewhere. So let's just respond to this right now. 
What has God said to you this morning? I want you to think about what God has spoken to you. I want you to quietly respond to God. This is important that we respond. Don't be like the man that sees himself in a mirror and walks away and forgets. Let's respond. God is wanting to change us and transform us. There's a convergence that he wants to take us to. So just before the Lord, just respond. If you need to repent, if you need to ask forgiveness, do so. Have you been wanting to run away from something God called you into? Some people want to run away from their marriage. It's like, man, I just can't handle this anymore. But if they're in the right attitude, they can stick in there. God will use marriage to make you into more of a Christ-like person. Some people... If God asks you to leave your job, leave your job. But if some people God says, stay here and finish what you start. Have you got a pattern? Some people have a pattern where they never finish what they start. They're always starting new things and never finishing. Well, you can determine and make a commitment before God today that you're going to stop being just a starter and you're going to become a finisher. They're the ones that will lay hold of their inheritance. They're the ones that will see the fullness of breakthrough. They'll see the fullness of the kingdom come when they finish. Are you one that keeps looking at the rearview mirror and looking back to the past and not focusing on the vision of the future? Just confess it to God. Just say, God, that's me. Help me change. Help my mind. Help my heart change. Are you like one of the ten princes, one of the ten spies, and, and you constantly are speaking negatively about the church, about God, about Christian life? You're constantly talking about negative things. And, and when you're doing this, by the way, you're infecting other people with your unbelief. You're infecting other people with your fear. Have you done that? Let's repent today for where we might have infected somebody with our fear. We might have infected somebody with our unbelief. We might have defiled them, discouraged them. Because it starts with 10 spies speaking negatively and then over 1 million people within the space of a day or two. 1 million people are all negative and 1 million people cannot enter the promised land. Are you like a Joshua and a Caleb that even if it is negative in the situation, it's difficult, but you speak like Joshua and Caleb. You can see God that's bigger. You can see the joy set before you. If you're not, do you want to be? Say, Lord, I want to be a Joshua. I want to be a Caleb. I want to, I want to be someone that speaks forth words of joy and speaks forth words of hope.